Suspense. Tonight's Suspense brings you as star Miss Marsha Hunt. But first, an important reminder that... Wherever hospitality is the last word in luxury, the first name in wines is... C-R-E-S-T-A? B-L-A-N-C-A? Cresta? Blanca. Cresta Blanca. Yes, you'll find Cresta Blanca wines featured in the smartest hotels, exclusive clubs, and discriminating homes. That's because these treasured wines are favored by people who know wine perfection. Let magnificent Cresta Blanca California wines distinguish your hospitality, too. Pour and enjoy a choice Cresta Blanca selection of sherry, port, or muscatel. Shenley's Cresta Blanca Wine Company, Livermore, California. And now, Shenley brings you Radio's Outstanding Theater of Thrills, Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A. Roma Wines of Fresno, California. And starring Marsha Hunt. In Self-Defense, a suspense play produced for Shenley by William Spear. And it couldn't have been pleasanter. I really think it was the fastest divorce I've ever had. <laughs> it always amuses me to hear you talk about your divorces, Mimi. You discuss them as if they were hairdressing appointments. Don't look now, darling, but hmm? a young man has been staring at you all through lunch. Oh, don't be silly. But I tell you, he has. Oh, he's coming this way now. Well, just ignore him. I'm sure he won't bother us. I beg your pardon. Hello, Bobby. <gasps> Wife... Fred, oh, this is a surprise. Yeah, happy when I hope. staring at you. Oh, why, of course. Oh, Mimi, this is Fred Dexter, Mimi Carlyle. Fred's a very old friend of mine. Well, hello. How do you do? Oh, do sit down, Fred. Mimi was just telling me about a mysterious man staring at me. <laughs> well, I guess I was staring, but I wasn't sure it was you. We were just going to order more coffee. Will you join us? Well, thanks, thanks. I don't mind if I do. Waitress, three coffees, please. Oh, you better make that, too. I really must run. Oh, hmm? no, I hope I haven't intruded. Not at all. But I must go. I have to see that wonderful lawyer of mine, and I know you two must have a lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't bother to get up. Nice to have met you, Mr. Dexter. It's my pleasure, Miss Carlyle. I'll call you during the week, Bobby. Please do, darling. Bye now. Well, Fred, where shall we start? I'd like to start where we left off six years ago. You still turn a nice phrase. And you're still the most beautiful woman in the world. Funny that you should feel that way after what happened. Oh, I was hurt deeply at first. Call it pride. Are you happy? Was it really worth it, Bobby? Oh, here's our coffee. Oh, thank you. The uh, usual one lump of sugar? <laughs> no, but thanks for remembering. A black <laughs> will be fine. You haven't told me if it was worth it. I have everything I ever wanted. Are you happy with it, Bobby? Please, Fred, let's not talk about it. What are you doing here in Florida? I uh, just got in a few days ago. Business. Sort of a troubleshooting job. Probably be here a few months. Did you come alone? If you mean am I married, no. I haven't found a girl rich enough. I guess I deserved that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Oh, it's getting late, Fred. It's almost two o'clock. I'm afraid I must be going. It's been wonderful seeing you. Will I see you again? Yes. When? When? Oh, I can't say for sure. Oh, how about lunch tomorrow? We'll meet here at one o'clock, huh? Well, you talked me into it. See you then. <laughs> I must admit it was quite a surprise meeting Fred Dexter. When I left Chicago, he was the one person I never thought I'd see again. But I couldn't decide whether or not I was happy that he was here. At dinner that evening, it was like any other night in my marriage. The usual business group was there, big cigars stuck in their flabby faces, all nodding in unison as Jonathan recited the day's news from Wall Street. I knew the speech by heart. Cotton up three points, sweet up one, steel up two. Tonight it annoyed me more than usual, but I just smiled and remained the perfect hostess. I'm sure it wouldn't have bothered me as much... Had I known then what Jonathan was going to tell me later, I was sitting in my room when he knocked on the door. Come in. Oh, that was a delightful dinner, Barbara. 
You were charming, as always. Well, thank you, Jonathan. I'm glad it pleased you. I, uh, I have a bit of news for you, my dear. News? Yes. Sure, it won't depress you too much, but I must leave on a business trip to South America. Oh, when are you leaving? My plane reservations are for tomorrow morning. Oh, you'll be gone long? Probably two or three months. We're opening a new branch office, and naturally, I'll have to see that everything is organized and properly launched. I'll cable you when I arrive. If you have a spare moment, I'd like to hear from you. I'll write you, Jonathan. Oh, thank you, Barbara. Well, good night, my dear. Jonathan was right. I wasn't at all depressed that he was leaving. In fact, I could hardly believe it. This would be the first time in five years that we had been separated for more than just a few days. It was a newfound freedom, and now I decided I was happy that Fred had arrived in town. The next few weeks passed quickly, and I saw Fred regularly, though we had to be careful where we met. It was a complete change for me, and it was wonderful to feel alive again. But for Fred, it just meant that he was falling more deeply in love with me. Oh, perhaps it wasn't right to encourage him, but I was enjoying myself thoroughly. One evening, just before Jonathan was to return, Mimi phoned and invited me to a party. It was a typical Mimi Carlyle affair with bright lights and dull people. Bobby, darling, I want you to meet Alex Maynard. That's he playing the piano. Oh, he's a perfect dream. Huh? Come, you must meet him this instant. Alex! Alex, I'd like you to meet a very dear friend of mine, Mrs. Jonathan Newell, Alex Maynard. Uh, Bobby to you, Alex. How do you do? Hello. Uh, and now you must excuse me. I'm going to practice my smile on my guests. <laughs> I'll see you both later. I hope we didn't interrupt your playing. You're not. I was just noodling around. Oh, don't stop, please. I love Gershwin. Oh? He's my favorite, too. You play beautifully. Thanks. It's a sort of a hobby. Something to do at dull parties. What do you do if there's no piano? I uh, find a beautiful young woman like you, talk to her. Maybe somebody else would like to play for a while. Maybe you're right. I thought it could never happen to me, but it did. The moment I saw Alex Maynard, I knew that for the first time in my life, I was in love. I spent every moment I could with him. But it was still necessary to see Fred occasionally. I lied about why I hadn't been with him much lately because I knew he'd make trouble if he found out about Alex. Everything was going along beautifully and I was so happy. But I knew it would all end the minute Jonathan returned. I couldn't bear the thought of living without Alex. And I decided to explain how I felt to Jonathan in the hope that he'd give me my freedom. It was strange but I didn't even want any of his money. I only wanted Alex. I knew that Jonathan might not be willing to give me a divorce, and a thought kept pressing on my mind. So I began thinking of other ways to get rid of him. I even thought of murder. For Suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you Marsha Hunt in Self-Defense. Roma Wines' presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is being brought to you by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma California Wines. From the world's greatest reserves of fine wines. High food prices, meatless Tuesdays, and eggless Thursdays puts the American homemaker on her mettle to create tempting menus with inexpensive dishes. But millions of women have discovered an easy way to transform the simplest meals into adventures of enjoyment. The secret? 
At dinner time, simply serve robust Roma Burgundy or delicate Roma Sauterne. Even the plainest dishes take on new glamour with Roma Burgundy or Roma Sauterne to bring out all hidden flavor goodness. So try this easy recipe for mealtime pleasure. Serve tempting Roma wines. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma wines than any other wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. And now Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Marsha Hunt as Barbara Newell in Self-Defense, a play well calculated to keep you in suspense. It wasn't long after I'd met Alex that Jonathan arrived home and immediately surrounded himself with his associates. It seemed that the two of us were never alone long enough to bring up the subject of divorce, and it was beginning to upset me terribly. I was becoming nervous and irritable, and Alex didn't make it any easier for me because he was continually asking about it. It was a Thursday night when I finally got to speak to Jonathan alone. The household help was off for the evening, and Jonathan was in his study going over some papers. I thought he was wrapped up in his business plans, but I must say I was rather surprised he was thinking of me. For after a long silence, he spoke. Barbara. Hmm? You haven't been yourself since I've come back. You're, you're jumpy and always on edge. Is there something on your mind? Yes, there is, Jonathan. I wanted to tell you about it, but I haven't been able to get you alone. Oh, we're alone now. Jonathan, I want a divorce. You know how I feel about that. But I don't want it because of your money. I swear I won't ask you for a penny. This doesn't sound like you, Barbara. I know it doesn't, but I'm not the same person you left three months ago. You see, I've fallen in love. Oh, come now, my dear. You don't expect me to believe that. It's true. You must believe it. Does he have more money than I? Of course not. Well, then you can't be in love with him. Not you, Barbara. It's just an infatuation, like a summer romance. I'm sure you'll get over it shortly. I'm sure you're just tired and need a change. Why don't you take a trip to the Bahamas, Nassau? Do a world of good. And then when you come back, I'm sure you'll regain your perspective. I don't want a trip. I want a divorce. I thought we had an understanding, my dear, but apparently you've lost sight of it. But we don't love each other and we never will. I'm quite aware of that, and I always have been. I'm sorry, my dear, but you can't raise any sympathy from me. You've gotten everything you wanted from this marriage, and I don't owe you a thing. I won't give you a divorce under any circumstances. Good night, Barbara. I knew all the time what Jonathan's answer would be, but I had to ask anyway. The next day, I met Alex at our usual place in the park. It was a pretty little spot in a cove just off the lake, hidden from view by a row of hedges. He was charming and attentive as always. I just couldn't tell him that Jonathan had refused to give me a divorce. I needed more time to think and to plan. My mind kept wandering back to the night before, and I guess I wasn't paying any attention to Alex because he became a little annoyed. Hey. Hey, remember me? Hmm? I play the piano. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, darling. I I guess I was daydreaming. Well, do it on your own time, huh? (laughs) What, uh, what were you dreaming about? I was just thinking how nice it is being here with you. I wish we could stay here forever. Mm. I'd like it, too. How long has it been since we've known each other? Oh, a couple of lifetimes. (laughs) It does seem a long time, doesn't it? It's funny that when you're in love, a few weeks can seem like forever. Are you in love? Uh Uh-huh. Hmm. Uh, Anybody I know? Maybe. (laughs) A funny-looking fellow, name of Alex. Oh, he's a lucky guy. You know, I wish I knew him. (laughs) Uh, I'm in love, too. Hmm. Anybody I know? Maybe. She's the most wonderful woman in the world. Who is she? My landlady. (laughs) (laughs) You know you're silly. You know I love you very much? Oh, and I love you, darling. Yeah, that's the way it's always going to be, huh? Have have you spoken to your husband about us? No. No, I I haven't had a chance yet. 
He's been so busy since he came back, I haven't been able to get him alone for a minute. But you must speak to him, darling. How long can we go on like this? Look, I don't want to see you just... just one or two days a week in the park. I want to be with you every day of my life. Don't you think I want that, too? Why don't we see him together? Have it out, once and for all. I know we can make him understand. Oh, no, Alex, we mustn't do that. You don't know Jonathan. It's better that we do it my way. Well, I have a share in this, too. And it isn't right that you should have to face him alone. Let me go with you. Oh, please, darling, let me take care of it. Just be patient a little longer. I know that Jonathan won't stand in our way. Yes, I knew that Jonathan would no longer be a problem because now I had the answer. I thought about it for several days and then decided I'd go through with it. It was a desperate plan, but a woman in love will do desperate things. You see, the plan included Fred Dexter and murder. I meant to see you sooner, Fred, but it's the first chance I've had to get away since my husband returned. Oh? I didn't know he was back. He got back last week. Are things still the same between you? Yes, still the same. I don't love him, and I'm sure he's not in love with me. It would have been different had you married me, Bobby. I know that, Fred. And I've been thinking about it lately. I had a lot of plans for us. It was going to be an ideal marriage. And then you decided that money was more important. I'm sorry, because I... I know I would have made you happy. You know, Fred, when you're young... You're apt to do many things that you regret later in life. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can correct those mistakes. Would you like to try, Bobby? Oh, Fred, that's what I want more than anything, but it's so difficult. Come here. Come here, sit next to me. Oh, you know how I feel about you. You're the only thing I've ever cared about. You're all I've ever wanted. I can't bear to see you unhappy, darling. Oh, Fred, I've been such a fool. I guess I've always loved you. There's never been anyone else. It's not too late. We'll go to your husband and we'll explain it to him. I'm sure he'll understand. He's got to understand. That won't work, Fred. What? Have you asked him already? Remember the first day we met in the cafe? I knew then that I wanted you and that I must get away from my husband. I asked him for a divorce that very night, and he refused me. I kept thinking about it all the time he was away, and when he returned, I begged him again, but the answer is still no. He says he will not divorce me under any circumstances. There must be something we can do. He has no right to stand in the way of our happiness. Do you think I want the rest of my life to be as empty as the past six years? I don't know what to say, darling. I don't see how we can possibly get rid of him. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it, exactly. We'll get rid of him. Fred, Fred, what are you thinking? Oh, I'm just thinking of you, darling. I want you, and I'll, I'm going to have you at any cost. Oh, Fred, I love you so much. Oh, my darling, my darling. It was so easy, I almost laughed in Fred's face. He sat there like a lovesick sophomore, swallowing every word I said like it was a sugar-coated pill. When he kissed me, it made me ill, but I didn't mind, because I knew this would be the last time I'd ever kiss anyone but Alex. My performance was so convincing that I didn't even have to suggest the murder myself. It was all Fred's idea, just as I wanted it to be. It would take place on a Thursday night when the household help would be off. Fred was to be hiding in the shrubbery at the side of the house. He would have the poker from the fireplace in our library. I wasn't worried about his being seen because the house was in an isolated neighborhood. When Jonathan came home at 7.30, as he always did, I was to pretend I had a headache and get him to go to the drugstore for some aspirin. Fred was to kill him with the poker and bring the body into the library. Meanwhile, I was to open the library wall safe and disarrange the furniture. We wanted to give the impression that a struggle had taken place. I would then go to the drugstore myself and make a purchase to establish an alibi. When I returned, I would call the police and tell them there had been a robbery while I was out and that my husband had been murdered. Simple, wasn't it? A nice, neat plan with no loopholes. 
This was the first time in my marriage to Jonathan Newell that I wanted him to be home on time. It was exactly ten minutes to seven on the night we had set, and the doorbell rang. As I opened the door, I was thinking it was rather nice of Jonathan to be early for his own murder. Bobby. <gasps> Alex, what are you doing here? Where is he? Where's who? Your husband. I can't stand this anymore. I've got to talk to him. Oh, Alex, you promised you'd leave this to me. You're acting like a child. But I haven't seen you all week. How much longer do you think I can wait? Oh, please, darling, this is no time to discuss it. Jonathan will be home any minute, and if he sees you here, it'll ruin any hope we have. Maybe he should see me here. But that's not the way. It won't help. I promise you that after tonight, everything will be all right. Bobby, that's what you said the last time. Oh, you've got to believe in me, Alex. Just give me tonight. All right. I guess you're right. It's just... just that I love you so much. Oh, I understand, and I love you. Oh, but please, you, you must go now. He'll be here any minute. Okay, I'll go. Call me in the morning, huh? I will, Alex. Good night. Goodbye, Bobby. <laughs> Poor darling thought he was doing the right thing. But actually, he almost spoiled any chance we would ever have for happiness. It's a good thing he left when he did. Because just a few minutes later, Jonathan came home. I was sitting in the living room with an ice pack on my head as I heard the door open. Is that you, Jonathan? Yes, Barbara. Well, oh, what's the matter with you? Oh, I have a splitting headache. Oh, but we're having dinner with the Vanders tonight. I really don't feel up to it. You go without me and give them my apologies. Oh, but Charlie's very important to me. I... Oh, well, if you'd rather... Oh, there is one thing you can do for me, Jonathan. Yes? We don't have an aspirin in the house, and the servants are all gone. Would you mind going to the drugstore and getting some? No, not at all. I'll go as soon as I dress. Would it be too much trouble to go now, Jonathan? Pain is unbearable. It will only take you a minute. All right, if you insist, my dear. Thank you. As soon as Jonathan left, I went to the library and set the stage. Then I returned to the living room and waited. I suppose I should have felt a sense of guilt, but I didn't. I only felt a warm glow, knowing that I would soon have Alex forever. In a few minutes... Fred opened the back door and dragged the body through the kitchen. He was carrying out the plan perfectly, and I could hear him placing Jonathan in the library. When he finished, he came into the living room where I was sitting. Well, it's done. Did everything go all right? I had some trouble unlocking the back gate. It, it took a little time, but I, I finally managed it. Did you put the poker in the room with him? Yes. Yes, and it's a very pretty picture. Would you care to see it? I'll take your word for it. You know, Bobby, I've, I've read about things like this, but I never thought I would wind up doing it. Are you sorry? Oh, no. No, it's not that, darling. You know, I'd do anything, anything for you with no regrets. That's the way I feel, Fred. No regrets. I guess... I guess when you do something for the one you love, you're never sorry. I know just what you mean. Well, I, I'd better be getting out of here so that you can get to the drugstore. I'm not going to the store, Fred. Huh? Why not? Did you change the plan? Yes. There's something I didn't tell you. Oh, what, what is it? This. What? What are you doing with that gun? I'm going to kill you. Oh, look, Bobby, look, we're both upset and I'm in no mood for jokes. Come on, let's finish what we have to do I'm and not get... joking, Fred. I'm going to kill you. Bobby, do you know what you're saying? This is what you wanted, what we both wanted. Your husband's out of the way. We're free. We can be married. I intend getting married, but not to you. But I, I, I thought... Of course that's what you thought, because that's what I wanted you to think. I've never loved you. I never could. And why did you lie to me? Because you were interesting for a while. After five years of Jonathan, anybody would have looked good. It just happened to be you. Oh. But then I met someone else. Someone I love very much. And I realized I needed you more than ever. But for this... But you don't have to kill me. I'm afraid I do, Fred. 
you might lose your head and do something stupid. You might even go to the police and give us both up because you can't have me. I can't take that chance. You'll never get away with it. I'm sure I will. I figured this out very carefully. You see, my husband is dead in the library, murdered by a jealous lover who forced his way into our house. Oh, no. Oh, I'm afraid I'll have to shoot you in self-defense. You're insane. They'll never believe you. Look, Bobby, look. I'll go away. I'll never tell a soul. You'll be clear. I promise I'll... Ah! 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 Operator, give me the police. I'd like to report a murder. I knew exactly what I was going to say to the police when they arrived. Yes, for a moment I was very happy and quite pleased with Barbara Newell. Everything had gone smoothly, exactly as I had planned it. Except for one thing. I should have looked at the body of my husband. If I had, I might not have been convicted of murder. You see, my scheme would have worked perfectly. But I overlooked a very important point. It hadn't occurred to me that Fred had never seen my husband, Jonathan. And the man he killed coming out of the house was Alex Maynard. Suspense. Self-Defense, starring Marsha Hunt, presented by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, America's largest selling wines. When you serve your favorite Roma wine, you enjoy the rich reward of nature's treasure. Selected California grapes, gently pressed at their peak of goodness. Then, with ancient skills and unmatched winemaking resources, Roma Master Vintners guide these natural juices unhurriedly to tempting taste perfection. These Roma California wines are placed with other mellow Roma wines to await later selection from the world's greatest reserves of fine wines for your pleasure. If you are expecting friends this weekend, give everybody a treat. Serve glorious nut-like Roma sherry, fruity Roma port, or mellow Roma muscatel. Enjoy the better taste that has made Roma wines... America's Favorite Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Marsha Hunt may currently be seen in the United Artists film Carnegie Hall. Tonight's suspense play was by Arthur Julian and Howard Leeds. Next Thursday, same time, you will hear Dennis O'Keefe as star of Suspense. Produced by William Spear for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. This is Truman Bradley with today's reminder from Roma. Your community chest supports supervised children's recreational centers in neighborhoods and youth organizations. These are red feather services needed by every boy and girl. Keep them going. Give now. Give generously to your community chest. In the coming weeks, Suspense will present such stars as Louis Jourdain, June Havoc, and others. Make it a point to listen each Thursday to Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.